lesson we're going to examine more closely a managed exchange rate system. In a previous lesson we examined a floating exchange rate system and identified the different determinants of exchange rates in a floating system. Today however we're going to look at a different scenario, one in which a government chooses to manage the value of its currency against another currency. So let's start with the definition of a managed exchange rate system. This is a system under which a government and central bank actively manage the value of their currency against another currency. Usually this means keeping the exchange rate within a certain range of acceptable exchange rates. Essentially what the government and central bank do is they set a price ceiling and or a price floor for the currency to keep it from depreciating or appreciating by too much. To guide us in this lesson, we're going to use a real-world example of a country that recently intervened in its foreign exchange market to maintain a maximum exchange rate for its currency against another. We'll be looking specifically at the market for Swiss francs in Europe. Now, I've been working in Switzerland for almost eight years now, so a few years ago I was surprised when suddenly the value of my domestic currency, the Swiss franc, appreciated greatly against the euro, which is the currency used by most of Switzerland's trading partners and all of our immediate neighbors. Let's have a quick look at a chart showing the 10-year history of the value of the Swiss franc against the euro, and then we can apply some figures from that chart onto our graph to do our analysis today. Here we have a chart going back to 2005, at which time the value of one Swiss franc expressed in terms of euros was 65 cents. Notice that between 2005, 2006, 2007, and most of 2008, the value of the franc remained at around 65 euro cents. But starting in mid-2008 and 2009, the franc started steadily appreciating against the euro, as we can see here, up to 75 euro cents by 2010, up to 85 euro cents by the middle of 2011, and peaking out at almost one euro per franc in the summer of 2011 peaked out at over 95 euro cents per franc. This represents almost a 50% appreciation between 2006 and 2011 of the Swiss franc. Notice, however, that in mid-2011, the franc rapidly dropped in value to right around 83 euro cents and stayed there for most of the next four years, from 2011 to 2015. What happened between 2011 and 2015 in the market for Swiss francs in Europe? Well, this was not the free market acting and causing the franc to depreciate. Rather, the Swiss National Bank and the Swiss government decided to intervene in the Forex market and devalue its currency against the euro. The purpose for this, not surprisingly, is to protect Swiss exporters who were being harmed by the stronger and stronger franc experience between 2009 and 2011. Let's now go back to our graph and illustrate what was happening between 2006 and 2011, which was causing the franc to appreciate. You may be familiar a little bit with the European financial crisis that started happening around 2008-2009. By 2010, when the Greek government revealed that its deficits were much larger than investors had thought they were, there began a flight away from European assets. Investors took their money out of European government bonds and started putting their money into safer assets, including Swiss francs, Swiss government bonds, and Swiss banks. In order to invest in Swiss assets, there was an increase in the demand for Swiss francs starting around 2008. We can show that on our graph, as we can illustrate the appreciation of the Swiss franc between 2008 and 2011 to nearly one euro per franc. The demand for Swiss francs grew steadily, I'll call this D2011 because it was during 2011 when the franc reached nearly one euro. So the franc actually momentarily appreciated to one euro per franc. Now this is when the Swiss government and Swiss National Bank decided to do something to devalue the franc in the Forex market. And what they did was they decided to intervene in the Forex market by using two of the three standard tools for managing or pegging a country's exchange rate against another. We'll start with the first tool that the Swiss National Bank employed to try to bring down the value of the Swiss franc to help Swiss exporters. Before they used any direct intervention in the foreign exchange market, the Swiss National Bank first used expansionary monetary policy. Expansionary monetary policy means lower interest rates. The purpose of reducing the interest rates in Switzerland in 2011 was to try to discourage people from investing in Swiss assets, since lower interest rates mean lower rates of return on investments in Switzerland. Lower interest rates should reduce demand for a currency 
and lead to its depreciation. Now, if a central bank intentionally reduces interest rates with the goal of reducing the value of the currency, this is not actually called depreciation anymore. The term we use for this active intervention in the foreign exchange market is devaluation. Let's have a look at what the intended consequences of the lower interest rates that the Swiss National Bank imposed in 2011 were in the market for Swiss francs in Europe. While demand had risen for most of the previous three years, lower interest rates were meant to reverse that increase in demand for Swiss francs. Lower interest rates would reduce the attractiveness of Swiss assets to foreign investors and, in theory, reduce the demand for Swiss francs. So I'll call this DIR down. In other words, if the interest rate falls, demand for Swiss francs should fall and the currency should weaken. What if Switzerland had wished to revalue or appreciate its currency? Well, that's not exactly what the government wanted to do at the time, but if it were in a situation where it wanted to strengthen the Swiss franc against the euro, it could have raised interest rates. So higher interest rates should increase demand for a currency and lead to its appreciation. The term we use when a central bank actively intervenes to try to appreciate its currency is revaluation. In the case of Switzerland, lower interest rates didn't do enough to bring down the exchange rate. By mid-2011, the exchange rate had risen to nearly one euro per franc, and the Swiss National Bank turned to a second tool of exchange rate management to try to bring down the value of its currency. So what I'm going to do now is put a price ceiling, or an exchange rate ceiling, in our market for Swiss francs in Europe. Because in July of 2011, that's exactly what the Swiss National Bank did. The Swiss National Bank announced in July of 2011 that it would set a price ceiling in the market for Swiss francs at 83 euro cents which puts a horizontal line across our graph right here at 83 euro cents. The national bank essentially put a price ceiling on the Swiss franc at 83 cents and promised to do whatever it took to bring down the value of Swiss francs and maintain it below 83 cents per franc. And the way it had to do that, because lower interest rates had not done enough to reduce demand to the level where the exchange rate was at 83 cents, the Swiss National Bank decided to use official reserves and directly intervene in the forex market in order to reduce the value of its currency. So the use of official reserves means a central bank can buy or sell its own currency on the forex market in order to revalue or devalue it against another currency. So what would the Swiss National Bank have to do in the market for Swiss francs? Would it want to buy Swiss francs or sell Swiss francs in the Forex market? Let's think about that for a minute. If the SNB, the Swiss National Bank, had bought Swiss francs, it would have further driven up the demand for Swiss francs in the Forex market, causing the currency to get even stronger against the euro. What it did instead was it promised to buy euros in nearly unlimited quantities in order to strengthen the euro and weaken the franc on the Forex market. So if we had a market for euros here, what I would show now is the demand for euros in Switzerland increasing, but the way they increased the demand for euros was by printing hundreds of billions of francs and increasing the supply of Swiss francs in the Forex market in Europe. I'll call this S1. S1 stands for with central bank intervention. The Swiss National Bank had intervened in the market for Swiss francs, increasing the supply until the value of the franc fell below the 83 cent price ceiling, which the Swiss National Bank had determined was the optimal exchange rate for the Swiss franc. So this horizontal line is essentially a price ceiling in the market for Swiss francs. In order to maintain that price ceiling, the Swiss National Bank had to sell Swiss francs in the foreign exchange market and buy euros. The increase in the demand for euros caused the value of the euro to rise from nearly one Swiss franc to 1.2 Swiss francs, and conversely, the value of the franc fell from one euro to 83 euro cents. So going back to our explanation, we can say that if a central bank wishes to devalue its currency, it must buy the foreign currency, which adds to the central bank's official reserves and sell its own currency on the forex market. This would lead to a devaluation of the currency and in the case of the Swiss franc this is exactly what the Swiss National Bank did starting in 2011. It started buying euros and selling Swiss francs bringing down the exchange rate of the Swiss franc in the forex market to the 83 cent price ceiling that the National Bank determined was optimal. Let's go back and look at our exchange rate chart for the value of the Swiss franc. So now we see starting in 2011 
the Swiss National Bank established a price ceiling for the franc of 83 cents, and the exchange rate remained fairly close to that price ceiling for most of the next four years. A couple times the value of the franc fell down to 80 cents, as you can see here, or at one or two points to just below 80 cents. But the Swiss National Bank had no problem with this. The depreciation of the franc was exactly what the bank was hoping for when it set the price ceiling. But let's go back to our graph and talk about a hypothetical situation in which a government or a central bank sets a price floor on a currency and show what would happen if the equilibrium exchange rate fell below that price floor. Here we go.